check the screen is it visible yes sir okay so we have started model number 2 design of shallow foundation so we have discussed about the classification of foundation classification of footing objectives then the importance and the field suitability of each so we have discussed in the previous class so today i am going to discuss about the design of a single column footing the procedure as per the is 456 so here in your syllabus they have mentioned as per the is 456 you need to design the footing so how you have done in uh, your uc in the design of rcc the footing design the same way you need to design the footing here so starting from calculation of area calculation of bending moment shear force then the providing the reinforcement and the all the checks needs to be done here okay so they have mentioned using is 456 2000 so they have mentioned clearly here you need to use the is code according to that you have to design the footing here okay so that steps i am going to discuss today that is uh, this is a design of a single column footing means a spread footing uh, the the footing could be rectangular or a, a square but the column may be circular rectangular square for that column you need to design the footing and here they mentioned with and without eccentricity means for the concentric load as well as for the eccentric load you need to design the footing here okay so is it clear so this is this is very important for you so this design of combined footing and design of a single column footing of different shapes circular rectangular a square footing sometimes the sloped footing so you need to design as for the is 456 2000 right so you need to uh, have is 456 2000 so okay then we have discussed uh, these things in previous class so shallow foundations the types of shallow foundations combined footing then uh, this uh, definitions of footing foundation we have discussed previous class then the bearing capacity here also you need to understand the bearing capacity of the soil okay the equation to be remembered the bearing capacity how to calculate and all and uh, uh, how to improve the bearing capacity of the soil we have discussed and also the definitions types then the modes of shear failure also the shallow foundations will fail in general shear failure local shear failure punching shear failure and uh, Ah, uh, this is Tarzgi's equations. I think uh, you all have remembered this equation, right? This equation. Yes, sir. Okay. While designing the shallow foundation, when you do the design of the shallow foundation, they should be given SBC of the soil. Okay. If SBC of the soil is not given, if these parameters are given, C that is a uh, cohesion, gamma, or uh, Uh, the angle that is a friction angle is given then you need to calculate the sbc of the soil by using this formula then you have to utilize that sbc for the design of the foundation as yes, this formula to be remembered i'm telling okay and this is a generalized formula for the tarzgi's that is a tarzgi's bearing capacity equation you you need to remember this equation uh, this is for a continuous foundation given and this is for the square foundation this is for the circular foundation okay so these all three formulas you need to remember for the design of uh, footings okay and also how to take the values of nc and q and n gamma you know how to take this okay so these all things we have discussed in previous classes okay and the effect of water table and all so and uh, uh, we have Now discussed also the foundation loads. What all the loads to be considered for the design of foundation and all, and uh, depth of footings. Uh, what are the factors that govern the foundation depth? We have discussed in the previous class. So these all things we have discussed. Very important. And minimum depth to be taken as per the Rankine's formula. This is the minimum depth criteria. 
if angle is given that is pi and q is the intensity of loading is all given the minimum depth to be provided is this much according to the rank kinds okay so these many things we have discussed in the previous class so today i am going to discuss about the design aspects of the foundation now is it visible yes sir yes sir okay so very important for the examination point of view you need to practice the design how you have uh, done in rcc in your uc the same way you need to design here also because they have clearly mentioned as for the is 456 2000 you need to design the shallow foundation that is for the single column so means uh, spread footing that is isolated and also combined footing design is there so it is uh, in detail it, uh, that is designs to be done as for the is 456 2000 here so uh, these things uh, we have discussed that is a uh, general that is a uh, most of the structures built by us are made of reinforced concrete uh, here the part of the structure above the ground level is called as a superstructure and where the part of the structure below the ground level is called as the substructure these things are we know and footings are located below the ground level and are also referred as foundations foundation is the that part of the structure which is in direct contact with the soil and the rc structures consists of various structural components which act together to resist the applied loads and transfer them safely to the soil that is the function of the footing so in general the loads applied on the slabs in buildings are transferred to soil through beams columns and footings and footings are that part of the structure which are generally located below the ground level and they are also referred as a foundations and footings transfer the vertical loads horizontal loads that is lateral loads moments and other forces to the soil and what are the important purpose for the foundation that is purpose of foundation the purpose of foundation is to transfer the forces from superstructure to the firm soil below to distribute the stresses evenly on foundation soil such that the foundation soil neither fails nor experiences any uh, excessive settlement and to develop an anchor for stability against overturning and uh, to provide an even surface for the smooth construction of the superstructure uh, just i am uh, uh, just revising the things so what we have we had discussed in the previous class and all this is the importance important purpose of foundations that is to transfer forces from the superstructure to the firm soil and to distribute the stresses evenly on foundation soil such that foundation soil neither fails nor experiences any excessive settlement and to develop an anchor uh, for stability against overturning and to provide an even surface for the smooth construction of the superstructure and due to loads on the soil pressure due to loads on and the soil pressure footings develop a bending moments in the shear force this is important what you need to calculate bending moment and shear forces while designing the footing and calculations are made as per the guidelines suggested in is 456 2000 to resist the internal forces okay and uh, these things also we have discussed so what are the different types of the foundation that is shallow foundation deep foundation the definitions also we have discussed when we call as a shallow foundation when we call as a deep foundations and all and even uh, the types of shallow foundations we have discussed that is isolated footing combined footing strap strip mat wall footing these all are the types of the shallow foundations and uh, even uh, isolated footing uh, when these are when uh, means isolated footings are to be provided so these are independent footings which are provided for each column and this type of footing is chosen when sbc is generally high when the sbc of the soil is generally high and columns are the uh, uh, placed uh, far apart and loads on the footings are very less that time we go for the isolated footings and the isolated footings can have a different shapes in a plan generally it depends on the shape of the column 
cross section some of the popular shapes of the footings are the square rectangular and circular the isolated footings essentially consists of a bottom slab like this and, and these uh, bottom slabs can either flat stepped or sloping in nature and the bottom of the slab is reinforced with a steel mesh to resist the two internal forces namely bending moment and the shear force so that you need to uh, calculate bending moment and shear force and all and the sketch of typical isolated footing is here so this is a, a, a footing and uh, here is a this is the column provided here and this one is a footing okay so here the load on the column and from the column the load is transferring to the footing here this is a plan and section of typical isolated footing and similarly combined column combined column footing that is these are common footings which are support the load from two or more columns combined footings are provided when svc of the soil is very less columns are placed closed means uh, columns are closely spaced footings are heavily loaded in that case the combined footing will be providing and in the above situations the area required to provide isolated footings for the columns generally overlap means if you want to provide isolated footing the both the put things get overlap so in that situation the combined footing is preferred and hence it is advantageous to provide a single combined footing and in some cases so the columns are located on or close to the property line so in such cases footings cannot be extended on one side so here the footings of exterior and interior columns are connected by the combined footings like this so suppose one footing is located on the exterior side of the uh, uh, site so in that case the only one footing is provided for both the columns this is called as a combined footing again this the the shape of the footing could be uh, rectangular or trapezoidal depending upon the load coming on the uh, columns okay so combined footings are essentially consists of a common slab for the co uh, of columns Uh, it is supporting, and these have, slabs are generally rectangular in plan. Sometimes they can also be a trapezoidal in plan. So, like this, sometimes it could be a rectangular in shape, like this, or sometimes it could be trapezoidal, depending upon the load coming on the column. Combined footing can also have a connecting beam and a slab arrangement, which is similar to an inverted T beam slab. Also, okay. So, this is about the combined footing. and coming to the strap footing an alternative way of providing a combined footing located close to the property line is a strap footing in strap footing independent slabs below the columns are provided like this it's a strap beam which are then connected by a strap beam the strap beam does not remain in contact with the soil and does not transfer any pressure to the soil generally it is uh, used to combine the footing of the outer column to the adjacent one so that the footing does not extend the adjoining property a typical strap beam, strap beam is shown in the figure so like so here one footing isolated footing and this is isolated footing and both the footings are connecting by a beam providing a beam at the center it is this is called as a strap beam and this is a plan of the strap beam how it is been providing on the site and all this is a what we call as a strap beam and coming to the strip footing a strip footing is a continuous footing provided under a columns or the walls a typical strip footing is as shown in the figure here so this strip footing means it uh, supports the n number of uh, columns like this or it supports the uh, wall that is this is also called as a continuous footing and mat foundation mat foundations covers the whole area of the structure the detailing detailing is similar to two way reinforced solid floor slab or the flat slab it is combined footing it is nothing but a combined footing only that covers the entire area beneath the structure and supports all the walls and columns it is normally provided when the soil pressure is very low loads are very heavy and the spread footings which cover more than 50% of the area then that time the mat foundation will be providing so it supports the only one single uh, footing is provided and it supports n number of the 
columns. Then coming to the types of D foundation again, there is a uh, separate module for this D, D foundation. Uh, D foundations are of three types, pile foundation, pier foundation, well foundation. Again, we'll discuss about these things. And the bearing capacity of the soil, we have discussed the definition of bearing capacity of the soil and how uh, it depends on what factors. It depends upon the size of the footing, shape of the footing, inclination of the footing, inclination of the ground, type of the load coming on the structure, depth of the footing. So the bearing capacity of the soil it depends upon these many factors. And the bearing capacity of the soil, that is SBCs alone, uh, is not sufficient for the design. Uh, the allowable bearing capacity is taken as the smaller of the following two criteria. Uh, when we want to take the SBC of the soil, it should be taken the smaller of the these two, that is uh, the limit states of shear failure criteria and limit state of settlement criteria. And based on the ultimate capacity, and as you all know how to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil by using the Terzighi's equation. And once we get the ultimate uh, bearing capacity, or uh, if you want to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity, that is SBC will be total load by area of the footing. So whatever the load given, or whatever the load acting on the structure that is to be taken and divided by the area of footing gives you the SBC of the soil. And usually the allowable pre bearing pressure that is ABP, it is a short form, allowable bearing pressure varies in the range of 100 to 400 kilonewton per meter square. The area of the footing should be so arrived that the pressure distribution below the footing should be less than the allowable bearing pressure. Means whatever the pressure which you calculate beneath the footing that should be lesser than the allowable bearing pressure. Okay. Then even for the symmetrical loading, the pressure distribution below the footing may not be uniform sometimes. And it depends on the rigidity of the footing, the soil type and con condition of the soil. In case of a cohesive soil and cohesion less soil, the pressure distribution varies in a non-linear way. So this we have discussed in uh, previous class. And however, while designing the footing, so we assume the linear variation of the pressure distribution from one edge of the footing to the other edge. Then we design the footing. So generally, the, we assume the pressure distribution under the footing as a uniform. So we assume uniform pressure distribution. But practically, the pressure distribution is not uniform under the footing. So if you take a cohesion soil or cohesion less soil, so it will be a varying a non-linear way. Okay. But for the design purpose, the pressure distribution to be assumed informally. Okay. Uh, once the pressure distribution is known, the bending moment. So once you calculate the pressure distribution under the uh, footing, the bending moment and shear force can be determined and the footing can be designed to safely to resist these forces. Then coming to the design of isolated column footing. So how to uh, proceed the steps or how to follow the steps or what are the steps to be followed for the design of the uh, isolated footing. Okay. I hope uh, this much is clear. Yes, sir. The steps to be followed for the design of isolated column footing. Uh, first, you need to calculate the area of footing. Means uh, you have to pro proportion the size of the footing. So here, for proportioning the size of the footing, you need to assume the weight of the footing means the load will be given. For a given load, you have to assume the 10% weight of the footing uh, to the axially loaded column. And if the column load, uh, suppose if it is a W, the column load is acting W, then the load on the soil to be taken as 1.1 times of W. So why 1.1 times after W is because you are taking 10% weight for the footing. 10% weight, that is self weight of the footing to be taken, that is to be added in this one. And it becomes 1.1 times of W. And for that 1.1 times of W, you need to calculate the area of the footing. So area of the footing to be calculated, that is area will be what? The load, whatever the load acting W, divided by the allowable bearing pressure, that is SPC. So W divided by SBC, when you do it, you will get the area of the footing. From the area of the footing, whether you can provide the square footing or the rectangular footing. If you are providing the square footing, then both the dimensions are same. That is L equal to B equal to, you will get square root of A. Then you will get L, L and B. 
both are same. If you are providing the rectangular, then again you have to uh, proportion it correctly and you have to provide the footing size. Then you have to provide the thickness of the footing uh, based on the bending moment criteria. You need to refer the IS 456-2000 for the calculation of depth of the footing or the thickness of the footing. Uh, you need to take the equation that is 0.138 FCK uh, MU, MU limit that is MU equal to that formula to be taken. I hope you remember that formula. Have you remembered that formula to calculate the depth of the footing? MU equal to MU limit equal to, have you remembered that formula? It's a 0.13 FCK into BD square. Yes, I'll write for just a minute. Just tell me. 0.138. Wait one minute. Tell me MU equal to MU limit equal to yes, 0.138 FCK BD square. So this formula to be used for the calculation of the depth. Okay. Then after that, the reinforcement details of the footing, because uh, you'll be calculating the bending moment and shear force. Once you calculate the bending moment and shear force, based on the bending moment and shear force, you need to calculate the reinforcement details. Then check for the bearing stresses and the development length finally. Okay. So these are the steps to be followed. And this is carried out considering the loads of the footing. SBC of the soil, grade of concrete, grade of steel, and these all to be given. See, the loads to be given on the footing and the SBC of the soil. If suppose the SBC of the soil is not given, how will you calculate? Sir, 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi into d by gamma. What? Yes, tell me. Repeat. Sir, 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. That is a depth. That is depth. That is Rankine's depth. I am asking what if the SBC of the soil is not given. If suppose C, C value, gamma value and pi value is given, which formula to be used to calculate the SBC of the soil? Tarski's formula, right? Yes, sir. So for the design of isolated column footing, the loads, considering the loads on the footing, SBC of the soil, grade of the concrete, grade of the steel and the method of design is similar to the design of beams, how you design the beams and slabs. Since footings are buried, you need not check for the deflection. That is, uh, since footings are buried, deflection control is not important here. However, crack width should be less than the 0.3 mm. The steps followed in the design of footings are generally iterative. The important steps in the design of footings are. So as I uh, told, find the area of the footing due to service loads. Assume the suitable thickness of the footing. Either you can assume the suitable thickness of the footing. Then you have to check finally uh, based on the shear criteria and all, all. Or else you can calculate the thickness based on the bending moment criteria like this. MU equal to MU limit. Then identify the critical section for the flexure and shear. So where bending moment uh, is critical for the section. Can anyone tell where the bending moment is critical for the section? If this is the column, just recall your RCC design. So can anyone tell where the bending moment will be crit critical? If suppose this is the width B for the column and this one is the depth D for the footing. Can anyone tell where the bending moment is critical? Where is the center? Sir. Identify the critical section of the flexure means for the bending moment and for the shear. Where it could be? Bending moment critical. Yes, anyone? Sir, I think at the end, sir. Both sides. End means where? Sir, at the width is there, no, sir. At the side of the B. Me, okay. At the face of the column, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, it's the face, correct. We, here it is bending moment maximum. You need to choose this section. This is the critical section. Then you have to calculate bending moment at this section. Okay. So identifying the critical section means this is what we have identified here, the critical section. This is the bending moment. Okay. At this point, the bending moment is maximum. Can anyone tell where the shear is uh, maximum? Again, uh, in shear, again, uh, one-way shear, two-way shear will come. So where will be the maximum one way shear? One way shear. Is it at a distance of D? Have you remembered? 
Yes, sir. So at this distance, at a distance of D, the one-way shear will be acting. This is maximum here. And at a distance of D by 2, two-way shear. Have you remembered punching shear or two-way shear? We call it the punching shear or two-way shear. This is a footing. This is the column. And for the two-way shear we take, it is a D by 2. And here, D by 2. Correct, huh? Have you remembered these things? Yes. Remember or not? Yes, sir. You please take IS456-2000, read it, and try to understand the critical section for the bending moment, for the footing, and the shear. Okay. Then after that, find the bending moment and shear force at these critical sections due to the factored load. The load to be factored, and you have to calculate the bending moment and shear force. Once we get the bending moment and shear force, Check the adequacy of the assumed thickness, means whatever the thickness you have assumed here or you have calculated based on the moment criteria that is to be checked once again here. Uh, then find the reinforcement details, you have to calculate the reinforcement and check for the development length, check for the bearing stresses. So these all steps to be followed for the design of isolated footing, that is single column footing as for the IS456. Then the limit state of collapse is adopted in the design is, uh, for the isolated column footing. The various design steps are considered have designed for the flexure. Again, design for the shear means one way shear and two way shear to be checked. Then the design for the bearing, design for the development length. Then the materials used in RC footings are the concrete and the steels will be used. The minimum grade of concrete for the RCC, remember the minimum grade for the RCC is M20 concrete. You should not uh, use below this one. Okay. Minimum grade should be M20, which can be increased when the footings are placed in the aggressive environment or to resist the highest stresses. The minimum grade should be M20. Okay. Then, so these things, the, what is what should be the cover, minimum reinforcement and bar diameter, so these all things will be given in IS 456-2000. You need to refer the IS 456-2000 and according to that, you need to provide the cover. So the minimum thickness of cover to main reinforcement shall not be less than 50 mm for the footing. Uh, and uh, that is uh, shall not be less than 50 mm for the surface in contact with the earth face and not less than 40 mm for the external exposed face. However, where the concrete is in direct contact with the soil with cover should be 75 mm. In case of a raft foundation, the cover for the reinforcement shall not be less than the 75 mm. And minimum reinforcement, the minimum reinforcement according to slab and the beam elements as appropriate should be followed unless otherwise specified. The diameter of the main reinforcing bars shall not be less than 10 mm. Then the grade of steel used either FE415 or FE500, whichever is uh, given. And specifications for the design of footings as per the IS456-2000. So here these are the guidelines to be followed for the design of foundations which are given in IS456-2000. I hope you all are having IS456-2000. Yes, sir. Okay. Please... Uh, uh, read and here I'll uh, uh, sh uh, show you that IS 456-2000. This is IS 456-2000. If you refer page number 63, so all of you read page number 63. So it is given here footings. You all can see here. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. The footings. So please read the same 34.1, 34.1.1. 34.1.2, the same guidelines I am giving here. Look here, 34.1, 34.1.1, 34.1.2, 1.3, like this. So the same guidelines just are included in here. So here, all the guidelines are given here. When you carry this code to the exam hall, so you all can get, get the guidelines here. But before going to the exam, you need to read it once. So what are the guidelines given here? So footings shall be designed to sustain the loads, that is applied loads, moments and the forces and induced reactions and to ensure that any settlement which may occur shall, shall be as nearly uniform as possible. Means that whatever the settlement 
occurs for the footing it should be uniform it should not be uh, unequal settlement okay that is dangerous for the structure and the safe bearing capacity of the soil is not exceeded so as for the code provided that is in 1904 and all the guidelines are given here the thickness at the edge of the footing what should be the thickness to be provided a minimum thickness is okay then you have to calculate by using the formulas and then you have to check with these thicknesses in a reinforced and the plain concrete footing the thickness that is or the depth at the edge shall not be less than 150 mm okay for the footings on soils nor less than 300 mm above the tops of the piles for the footings on piles again in case of a plain cement Uh, or plain concrete pedestal the angle between the plane passing through the bottom edge of the pedestal and the corresponding junction edge of the column with the pedestal and the horizontal plane shall governs the govern the equation so this equation to be followed okay so everything is given here you please go through the uh, guidelines given here and according to these guidelines we will design the shallow foundations okay so all the guidelines just are included here to clear i have included Right here, moments and forces. How it is to be taken? All the guidelines are given. Bending moment, shear force, and bond, and uh, tensile reinforcement. How much it should be? Uh, reinforcement in central band width. Total reinforcement in short direction. Transfer of load at the base. So how the ratio to be taken? Okay. So these things you need to follow. So we'll uh, wind up the today's session here. Yes, so please take the IS four by six. 2000 please read the page number 63 to till uh, till uh, last uh, i think uh, uh, some three four pages are there so please read that page pages so anyway you will be carrying that is 456 2000 for the exam but at least you just uh, 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 try to understand what guidelines are given and then we'll design the footings see here Uh, next class i am going to design according to the is 456 2000 only the step by step how to calculate the size of the footing how to check the two way shear and uh, uh, how to calculate the bending moment and how the critical section to be chosen for the bending moment and for the shear force how the critical section to be chosen and how to calculate the tau v and tau c uh, i hope you all have studied in uh, uh, design of rcc right footing design you all studied Yes, sir. yes sir yes the same way same to be carried here the same the ditto you need to design the footing but it is a single column footing uh, rectangular footing or the square footing then the combined footing but they are mentioned as for the is 456 because of that you need to do the detailing part also means uh, you need to calculate the reinforcement detailing uh, for that you need to calculate the shear force and bending moment Okay, so uh, this is one way shear. Uh, then after that, the check for the development length, check for the bearing stress. Then once you check the bearing stress, it should be within the prescribed. Then that ends the problem. Similarly, that this problem, first problem what I have taken is uh, with without eccentricity, and second problem I have taken is a uh, with eccentricity. Okay, so it is uh, having a moment. So for the moment, how to calculate the or how to design the footing and these two are are taken for the isolated footing that is a spread footing then combined footing is it clear so next class i am going to design isolated footing please uh, carry is 456 2000 and read also and uh, attend the class is it clear yes sir yes sir okay sir. Any, any doubt anything if you want to ask no sir So only thing you read IS four five six two thousand. Sure shot, you will get twenty marks question design. In design of shallow foundation, you will be getting twenty marks design. Either isolated footing that is a single column footing or combined footing. So practice the problems, then read IS four five six two thousand. Understand the guidelines, then according to that you design it. Right. So we'll wind up the today's session here. We'll continue tomorrow.